Hey guys, welcome back for a DIY modern living room makeover on a budget, of course. We're going to be starting by prepping and painting all of the walls in this space as always. And I also have a new product to share with you that made repairing a pretty large hole in the drywall so easy. I swear, if you have any major repairs, you need this. We also have a ton of new furniture from Castlery to furnish this space. And I am beyond excited to show you the pieces that I chose for this beautiful modern living room, as well as a ton of living room decorating ideas to share. So give this video a thumbs up and let's jump right into it. So we finished up with this castle redining room not too long ago and I love the way that it turned out but today we are back to work on this adjacent living room. This is going to be a huge transformation. I'm so excited about it. I can already envision it and I'm just so excited for what this room is going to be. We're really just wanting to zhuzh it up a little bit and create a more cohesive aesthetic between the living room and the dining room and the kitchen because it is so open concept in here and just transition this into the modern living room of their dreams. So we're gonna get started. Of course, I'm going to be taking everything out of here, removing everything from the walls. We're going to be starting with a blank canvas. We've got a ton of painting to do and a bunch of work before we can start bringing this furniture in. So let's get started. For all of my returning viewers and subscribers, this is going to be so redundant. You've heard me say this a million times, but for everyone who is new here, I just wanted to take a second to say hi, hello, welcome. My name is Megan, and I love to share these DIY room makeovers with you guys, as well as a lot of cleaning, decluttering, organizing, and overall homemaking content here on my channel. If that sounds like your vibe, then go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. I just wanted to share with you that that whenever I do post these DIY room makeovers, you will always see me starting this way by completely clearing out the space that I am working in. This just really helps my creative process a ton. One of the most commonly asked questions here on my channel is how do you plan these room makeovers and where do you get your inspiration? To be honest, I don't look at Pinterest boards or Instagram photos or anything like that. This is probably the most crucial part of it. I love to see a completely empty space and challenge myself to realize the full potential of the room and then make that happen. So that's what I'm doing today. After I've emptied everything out, of course, I'm going to start my prep work. I'm using this Drydex quick dry spackle. It goes on pink and turns white when it is dry, but I'm going to use this to fill in all of the nail and screw holes and any just areas of the drywall that look like they need a little bit of help. And so I'm going to kind of liberally fill in all of those holes. I like to use a plastic putty knife to do this. I feel like the flexibility of the plastic ones just works so much better and allows you to really get that putty into all of those grooves and this eliminates the need to keep layering on your spackle. But once I've got everything filled in on all of the walls and everything is dry, I'm going to go in with my sanding block, sand it all down to a smooth finish and this will create the perfect canvas to start painting all of these walls. Wanna shake the ground, wanna break away, let loose. I'm tired of waiting, gotta make that move. All the neon signs, now they shout to me.
I am using this DAP brand Eclipse Rapid Wall Repair Patch to repair a hole in the drywall that was left after removing an old security camera that was no longer being used. So in order to use this, you just have to sand over those rough edges and then wipe everything clean and dry with a paper towel or a rag. And then you just remove the patch from its packaging and stick it over top of the center of the hole and smooth it out just like a sticker. I was shocked at how well this worked. There was no spackling, sanding the edges, nothing that was required. I didn't have to cut out more drywall, repair it, tape and mud, nothing. This was such a quick, easy solution for a pretty large hole in the drywall that otherwise would have been such a headache to repair. So anyway, you just put that on there and then you paint over your first coat of paint. And after you've done that, you just remove that flap that you saw me leave sticking out and then you paint your second coat and it's as if that hole was never there. It gives such a seamless finish and is so durable. It just looks like a part of the drywall. So overall, I had a great experience with this product and I would highly recommend it. If you've got holes in the wall from wires being run, old security cameras, or whatever may have happened that would usually require a much more involved process to repair, definitely try these out first. They do come in various sizes, and like I said, I would recommend them. So I'll go ahead and leave the Amazon link down in my description box in case you are needing to try them out. Okay, so the walls are all prepped, floors are cleaned up, and we are ready for a fresh coat of paint. We loved the dining room paint color, so we are using that again. We have this huge five gallon bucket of the Bare Ultra Scuff Defense Stain Blocking Paint and Primer. It is in a satin finish. And let me see if there's a little code for you guys for the Swiss coffee color. It's just a warm toned white. It looked gorgeous. We painted this on the ceiling, the window sills, the walls and the baseboards in the dining room and loved it. So this is a huge bucket right here. I'm sure it'll be a bit of a challenge to get the paint out of there, but we'll see how I do. I'm gonna go ahead and get it all mixed up, pour it into my paint pan and start getting this painted onto the walls. To keep it nice and clean, not freak out and cause a scene. I try to hold it together, keep it together. Not sure who I really am, just be cute and super bland. I try to hold it together, keep it together. Been playing it down, but I'm so getting tired. Now won't you meet I just wanted to take a second to point out the technique that I am using as I'm painting through all of these walls. I've been using this in all of the most recent DIY makeovers that I've shared and I see a night and day difference in the finish and overall coverage of any of the walls that I'm painting from when I first started painting with no technique to what I have learned now. So just a little pro tip I guess you can say, whenever you are painting walls like this and you're not using a sprayer, you're just using a roller brush, I would always suggest that you 
work in V or W shapes and then fill in from there. So down on the bottom of the walls, like you can see here, I'm just going in up and down motions. These are smaller spaces with a lot of outlets and things like that that I wanted to avoid. So I couldn't really use that technique or I didn't feel comfortable using it here. But then once I have a larger area to work with, you can see that I paint a V shape onto the wall first. And then from there, I just kind of go and fill it in. I guess that's the best way that I can describe it. This works wonders to give you a smoother, more even coverage because what happens is a majority of the paint that is on your roller will get laid out in that V shape. And then as you are painting on the wall, of course your roller is losing paint from it. And so as it goes over the shape of that V or a W, a zigzag, whatever you want to use, it then picks up more of that paint that was initially placed down and just gives you an overall more even coverage. So like like I said, it is a night and day difference from when I first started painting in up and down motions to learning this new technique and I would highly recommend it. It kind of elevates your space from looking like it was DIY to almost being able to pass for a professional paint job. We are rapidly starting to lose daylight, so I just wanted to give an update real quick. I have the first coat of paint on all of the walls. I still need to get the ductwork up there and then cut in on the ceiling and the corners, but like I said, we're losing light and my camera is having a hard time focusing now with all of this white. So I'm going to finish all of this off camera and then also paint the second coat. I know you can't really tell because I have the brightness turned up, but it is very, very patchy. You can kind of see it in like some of those areas. And even as it's drying, it's still drying pretty patchy. So we're gonna need two coats for sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and get those done and then I'll come back and give you an update when everything is all painted. Okay, so we are back for day three for us. Day two, it looks like for you guys, but we finally have this massive room painted all with the Swiss coffee by Bear that's on all of the walls, windowsills, trim and baseboards, and this ductwork up here. Derek's standing in the middle of the room for me so my camera has something to focus on because with all of this white it really struggles. But of course when we start bringing in the castle reef furniture and all of the new decor it will warm the space up quite a bit. But this was a task so I just wanted to update you guys because you know I like to keep it real here on my channel and share the ups and downs of these room makeovers. I honestly thought because the wall color was such like a light beige or at least it looked light beige when we first started painting i thought we would be good to go with just one coat of paint that was absolutely not the case and it took us like almost three coats we were painting for two very long days in this room to get it to this opaque coverage but it's totally worth it. It really brightens up the space, makes it feel a lot bigger, and is giving us like a really good canvas to work with. But 
I always like to tell you guys, you know, when the uh, makeovers end up taking longer than I initially project, which is every single time, I just wanted to let you know what it was really like. So it looks like we're on day two for you guys, but we've really been at this for quite some time. I actually had to enlist Derek's help in painting the room just because my poor shoulders were getting so tired holding up the roller, but he did a pretty decent job. He doesn't do a lot of painting, so. <laughs> it was an event for sure. But anyway, now that we have all of this painted, the room is open for us, we can start bringing in all of our new Castlery furniture. Another pro tip, when you order from Castlery, most of their furniture pieces come fully or mostly assembled. If there is any assembly required, it's usually a very quick and easy process and doesn't take up a ton of space. So that makes it really easy to go ahead and play around with the layout ahead of time, get all of your furniture where you think you want it, and then from there it's super simple to just unbox it and already have your pieces in your space ready to go and use instead of trying to find a large enough area to put things together, trying to maneuver through doorways and things like that. It is just so simple with Castlery. Okay, so the guys did such a good job bringing in this furniture and helping me to visualize the setup of this room. I think that we have everything placed where it will be staying with the exception of the Adams sofa and ottoman over here. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it kind of coming out here perpendicular to the wall with the ottoman over here or the other option is to center it in between the two windows on this longer wall and have the ottoman coming out on the right side kind of to section off the room from the rest of the open floor plan here. We'll see once we actually get it unboxed how we prefer it. But the Luca TV console is definitely going to be staying over here underneath where the TV is mounted on the wall. And then we have two of the Esther tall bookshelves. I am beyond excited to get these unboxed and set up. We'll have them side by side on this wall right here and it will just be a lot of like a whole wall of open shelves and I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. They do have shelves that alternate with like a walnut wood finish and a marble finish and I am just beyond excited to see how beautiful they are. So we're gonna go ahead and start unboxing all this furniture, probably the media console first because I think that will be the easiest to just take out of the box and leave it there. I just have to say, I was so impressed by how much storage space there was in this Luca TV stand. When I was ordering it, I was a bit nervous that the low profile modern design would compromise the functionality of the piece, but it totally didn't and it by far exceeded my expectations. For the Adam sofa and its ottoman, the only assembly that was required was adding the legs onto the furniture, which was super quick and easy to do with all of the hardware and tools included. Now for the legs, I did choose the brass finish and I was so in love with how they looked when I got them all put onto the ottoman and the sofa. I think that they added so much warmth into the space without being too much and without compromising the modern design aesthetic. But if that's not your thing, they also do have black and silver options. 
For the cushions, I also chose the pearl beige. Again, I felt it was warm enough to complement those brass legs, but also neutral enough to kind of withstand the test of time and work with any trend that may come in and out of style. But they do also have dove gray, jet black velvet, and indigo blue just for that Adam sofa. And you'll see that throughout the Castlery website. They really have taken great care to curate a furniture selection that allows you to feel seen and comfortable in your space. No matter your personal design preferences, the colors, finishes, and textures that you prefer can be found at Castlery. Thank goodness for patient husbands when you get frustrated with yourself. I just tried to open the hardware and that was an event, but Derek is picking up all these pieces for me and then we're gonna get these shelves on here. I was a little nervous. I've never had any furniture that I really had to put together that I've ordered from Castlery. Everything pretty much just comes in one piece, usually just screwing on legs. So I didn't know what to expect, but Oh my gosh, this looks like it's going to be so easy. So it just has these brackets here and I just have to screw the shelves in and that's it. I think this one is upside down, so we'll turn it around, but the shelves will just sit right on here. So Derek will hold it steady for me while I put those on and these shelves look at how beautiful. So this is the same walnut finish as all that dining room furniture and it is just absolutely gorgeous, but look at these real marble shelves. These things are heavy. That was like very unexpected. They are heavy, they're solid here, and they're beautiful. So I'm really excited to get this all put together and see how it looks. Okay, so I just have to say, looking back at the footage, before I sped up any of the clips here, it only took 13 and a half minutes per bookshelf to get them fully assembled start to finish. That's from unboxing to having them fully assembled against the wall in place, 13 and a half minutes. That is crazy, like unheard of. I feel like I have put together quite a bit of furniture in my adult life and I have never had an experience as stress-free and honestly fun as my experience with Castlery. I have loved every single piece that I have selected and ordered from them. They have by far exceeded my expectation, not only from the ordering time, but also to the delivery, how protected everything is, the fact that I have seen no damage or scratches on a single piece of furniture, and that it's all ready to unbox and essentially just move into my space with minimal effort. But aside from all of that, just a few other things that I wanted to share about Castlery. They do offer free swatches, free shipping, and 14-day returns, as well as offering pay over time options that make their furniture more widely accessible no matter your budget. So if you are wanting to browse through the Castlery website, maybe have some fun daydreaming, or start reinventing some spaces in your home, I will leave a link for Castlery down in my description box, as well as links to all of the pieces that you have seen in today's video. And I do have to say a huge thank you to Castlery for partnering with me once again to create this gorgeous space for some of my friends.
I did want to add an area rug to ground all of the furniture. There was not one here previously, so I went ahead and ordered one from Ruggable, and I absolutely love it. You guys know that I love the convenience of these machine washable rugs. There's just a rug pad on the bottom and then a top layer that kind of Velcros on, and whenever you want to wash it, you just take off that top layer, throw it into the washer, they wash and dry perfectly, and they're just really great for households that have small children or pets but I chose this neutral crosshatch pattern and I love the way that it turned out it added just enough texture and warmth into the space without being too overpowering just got down to the last leg on these chairs that we ordered online. They are not Castle Re chairs, by the way, but I just wanted to show you. Now I wish we had ordered them from Castle Re because look at how the hardware came. Isn't this crazy? It's stuck together and we literally can't get them apart. It looks like they were spray painted or something and they're like painted together or even, I don't even know, but... Anyway, I'm gonna leave Derek to figure this out for me and get that last leg on down there. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna start bringing in all of the decor that we got for this space. So here is my first round of decor that I brought over. And I had been collecting all of these pieces over time and just storing them away because I knew that I would be working on this makeover. So I started with a few things that I already had it in my head exactly where I wanted those to go. And spoiler alert, they didn't actually all work out, but that's okay. I'll show you that process a little later on. But I'm just going to start working on those and then I am going to tackle those bookshelves and I had to stop after a little bit of doing this I got a little bit frustrated because the pieces that I had brought over just weren't coming together exactly how I wanted them to but that's totally fine that's part of the process of decorating and eventually I just decided to take a step away take a little break I went back to the stores back to my home started looking around at what I had and came back again with some more pieces to finish this space and bring it all together like I said that is just part of the process sometimes it's totally normal absolutely okay and I'm only sharing it with you because I want to let you know that if you struggle to decorate a space it is absolutely normal it happens to everyone no one gets it right on the first try but after a little bit of trial and error I was really happy with how these bookshelves turned out specifically but also how the entire room came together and I will share the final reveal here at the end of this video but I have a more in-depth room Room tour that I am sharing on my Instagram stories. So if you want to see each piece individually, find out where all of this decor came from, those types of things, head on over to my Instagram at loving life as Megan. And we're back day three for you guys, day five for me. I was getting a little frustrated last time I was here because I felt like I just did not have the right pieces to complete this space. So I'm back again with a ton more options. A perfect example is this side table over here. I love it. I think it is gorgeous. And I thought that it would work perfectly in that space, but it clearly doesn't. It's just kind of hidden and tucked away. It doesn't make nearly the statement that I thought that it would, and I don't think any amount of decor would overcome that. And so we're going a whole new route. I got a floor lamp here, and I'm excited to set that up and see if it makes more of a statement in there. And then also I brought back a ton more decor options. I was really struggling with what I had brought over the first time. I just could not figure out this media table over here or like console for under the TV. And then also there are quite a few holes in the bookshelves. They're so gorgeous. I wanna make sure that I do them justice. And I felt like the pieces that I had brought with me before just 
weren't quite working out. So I have some more over here to hopefully balance it a little bit better, fill in those holes without overpowering it. And I'm really excited to get started. Hopefully by the end of this day, we will have a completed living room space. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and start working on changing out some decor and getting everything put where I think it belongs. <laughs> Okay, we are almost to the final reveal, but first I wanted to share some before shots with you one more time just to remind you what this space looked like before we started in on this project so that you can feel the full weight of the transformation when I finally show you how it turned out now. But I hope that you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time hanging out with me. Thank you so much once again to Castlery for partnering with me on today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you aren't already, and here is how this modern living room turned out.